five freaking stars. How's it going everyone? It's day 17 of the G1 Climax, the A Block Finals. Today's show was from the Ryogoku Sumo Hall in Tokyo. There was an attendance of 6,598. It is a 13,000 capacity venue, but the way I understand it, it was basically sold out for the layout they had today. Uh, on Sunday they can fit in 13,000 by having four people into a two-person floor space. We started with Sonata versus Tenzan. The crowd was firmly behind Tenzan, it reminded me of day one. Tenzan kicked out of the TKO, Fireman's Carry Cutter. He performed a TTD, locked on the Anaconda Vice, and even went for the Anaconda Buster, but it wasn't enough. Eventually Sonata went for a Skull End, couldn't get the tap out, then went for the Moonsaw, and then finished off with another Skull End, which made Tenzan tap, gave Sonata the win. Sonata finishes on 8 points, 3 and a quarter star match. There was quite an emotional scene afterwards with Tenzan crying, I guess supposedly knowing that he, that might have been his last G1 match. The crowd had to hold back the tears, you could see. Uh, even I was getting a little bit choked up, admittedly. Next, Makabe versus Ishii. This was the stiff face-off you'd expect it to be. They were taking chunks out of each other throughout this match. Eventually, Makabe hit his spider German suplex, but missed the King Kong knee drop follow-up. It was a sliding lariat and brainbuster from Ishii, which gave him the win. Ishii finishes on 8 points, and I gave this match 4 stars. It's definitely one to go and watch. Next, one of the first vital matches towards the winner of the A block, Tonga on 6 points versus Bad Luck Farley on 10. Takahashi, Tonga Roa and Hangman Page are all at ringside for this one. Going to this, I had seen a theory that uh, perhaps Tonga might lay down for Farley, and give him the easy win, and it actually happened. But Tonga kicked out at 2, and then the exact same thing happened again with Tonga kicking out at 2. Frustrated by this, Farley went for the bad luck fall straight away and he threw Tonga over the top rope and onto the Bullet Club members. Tonga hit the head shrinker, double arm DDT, and followed up with a gun stun. And that was enough to get the 1-2-3. Tonga picks up the win, finishes on 8 points, and knocks his buddy, bad luck Farley, out. It's a 2 and 3 quarter star match. There wasn't any bad blood between the two of them after the result. In fact, they were embracing each other with two sweets. In the co-main, Marafuji on 10 points versus Goto on 10 points. Goto hit the Ushigaroshi for a near fall. Marafuji went for two heel kicks in the ko for another near fall. But it was a rear naked choke and GTR combo that gave Goto the win. Goto finishes on 12 points. This is a great 3 and 3 quarter to 4 star match, just like Makabe vs Ishii. So after that match, we're down to 3. Goto needs the main event to end in a time limit draw to win the block. And then there was the main event, Okada on 10 points versus Tanahashi on 10 points. Rematch from Wrestle Kingdom 10 and the next chapter in the long rivalry. Okada rifled away with all of his signature moves in like what the space of about 30 seconds near the start of the match. And he tried to finish Tanahashi early with a Rainmaker, but uh, Tanahashi reversed it into a two count inside cradle. Next he had a series of submission holds, there was the modified Indian Deathlock from Tanahashi and the Red Ink from Okada. Tanahashi hit a high fly flow to Okada on the outside. In retaliation, Okada hit a tombstone on Tanahashi on the floor. Getting back inside the ring, Tanahashi missed a high fly flow. Okada looked to capitalize with a Rainmaker, but then Tanahashi hit a Sling Blade. A bit further on, Tanahashi got a reverse Sling Blade and hit the high fly flow, but then went for a second and Okada got his knees up. Tanahashi then stole Okada's finisher and hit a tombstone on him with the 30 minute time limit fast approaching. Tanahashi went for what, his like 4th or 5th high fly flow at this point, but he was drop kicked in midair. Okada hit the Rainmaker and went for a second one, but it was reversed into a dragon suplex pin by Tanahashi for a very near fall. Okada then hit a tombstone pile driver on Tanahashi, but that wasn't enough. Tanahashi hit the sling blade and two high fly flows in a row. One, two, and the bell went. That's right, it was a 30 minute time limit draw in the main event. Hiroki Goto amazingly won A block. Five freaking stars to this match. I wish that I had recorded my reactions to this match because I was shaking. I was speechless. This is probably one of the greatest matches I've ever seen. This is certainly one of the top wrestling rivalries today. The only other one that comes to mind is uh, Zayn Owens, that Generico Steen rivalry. 
I think even if the bell hadn't have gone, Okada, I believe, kicked out as well. Honestly, I watched the match maybe nine hours ago from rec- from the time of recording this, and it's still the only thing that's running through my head right now. I think, for me, this was even better than the Wrestle Kingdom 10 main event because, I mean, Tanahashi is not 100%. His shoulder is still not fully recovered. And to put on that match, it's, it was insane. And that wasn't even the G1 final, that was just the A block final. What I am thinking now is this month might be one of the best wrestling months of the year. We've got the next two days here of the G1. You've got TakeOver Brooklyn next Saturday. You've got to think Nakamura versus Joe is going to be at least four stars. SummerSlam's got potentially two or three, four star plus matches and then you got Super J Cup finals next Sunday as well. I guess the way I would describe it is after watching this match you kind of you feel like you need to take a break from watching any more wrestling because how can anyone do it do it better? The best show of the G1 so far, even better than the opening night. It was similar to the opening night but this I mean they raised the bar ridiculously high in the main event. I've got to say the English commentary with uh, Kevin Kelly, Steve Carino and Rocky Romero was great. Particularly impressed by Carino's knowledge. So then, let's go through the final standings for A Block. Your block winner, if you can believe it, is Hiroki Goto on 12 points. Tanahashi and Okada are both on 11 points tied second. Fale and Marafuji are tied third on 10 points each. Tied fourth, you have Ishii, Makabe, Tonga and Sonata all on 8 points each. And unfortunately in 5th and last place, Tenzan on 4 points. I think I'm going to do a video on Monday just sort of uh, recapping all my conclusions from the G1. Because I've got stuff I want to say about Marafuji and Tenzan. I can't fit it all in one video. In terms of pre-tournament predictions for day 17, I did really bad. (laughs) I've got 1 out of 5, I only predicted Sonata being Tenzan. 49 out of 85 total, but uh, you know, I'll take it because if it had gone as my predictions it wouldn't have been as exciting as it was. I did have Okada and Tanahashi tied at 14 at the top of the block with Tanahashi winning the tiebreaker today. Interestingly I had Goto on 8 points way out of the running to win the block. So then day 18 and if it's anything like day 17 was it's gonna be wild. If you're not too sure about the B block winning scenarios I did make a video about 24 hours ago going through how everyone can win. My god, if Shibata wins the block, I think Reddit's gonna have an aneurysm. <laughs> I think Naito is still a pretty safe prediction to win the block tomorrow. Let me know in the comments if the Naito versus Goto final excites you. As always, thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. We've got just two days left of the G1. Day 18 video, same time tomorrow. Peace.